Hello there, very good day. Um, good afternoon, good morning to some. Um, welcome to uh, today's Breton's um, Financial Trading Academy um, webinar, and today is the 24th of February. I've just got a couple of things to share, but uh, mainly eight pairs that I've actually uh, noticed to have very strong uptrend or, or a lot of bullishness involved in these eight pairs, and majority of them are actually revolving the New Zealand dollar as well as the CHF. Um, both, um, I would say, not CHF, uh, not NZD, but CHF as well as uh, JPY are trading on a very low uh, as of today, as well as uh, this week for the start of the week on Monday onwards. So we see a lot of pressure on uh, both safe havens like CHF and um, JPY. So that gives a lot of opportunity on buying on eight pairs at least. And I will be sharing that with you today. So um, just before that, I want to take you through uh, the Facebook uh, Breton's Financial Trading Academy or Breton's Academy's uh, Facebook page. Uh, this is how it looks like. You can always type in and look for this page. This is where I'll be posting um, lots of trade ideas on it as well as the link to my webinars because the webinars are not fixed because mainly uh, it acts as a signals uh, sort of uh, session or webinar. So immediately as of, because uh, I'm, I'm uh, daily uh, trading as well as uh, researching the market. So as and when I notice some good movements, um, you know, high probability, um, low risk type trade ideas, I would definitely make a webinar out of it or a session to actually show and guide traders out there to actually trade them. So uh, this is how the Facebook page look uh, looks like and uh, it's best if you visit it regularly and also register, uh, just uh, send a message as well directly to myself uh, and uh, through there you can actually, uh, we can actually create some engagement whereby you've got some questions to ask, uh, troubleshoot your trades and everything else can actually be done on this Facebook page of Breton Academy. You can simply go on to the send message section right there, click on it, ask away. Okay, so all right, before, um, without any further ado, let's just uh, check a little bit on um, the trend, the market sentiments, uh, what's going on in the market at the moment. I uh, have some tools that I will share. I use the uh, Forex early warning heat map right here. And uh, from the heat map itself, uh, it caught my attention on all the JPY pairs right here, both on the Asian session as well as the European session. Uh, that gives me a lot of um, an idea that the volume is increasing even on the European session right now, whereby there's a lot of buying um, against the JPY. So most of the other pairs, I would say almost all the other currencies are actually stronger or more bullish than the JPY. So we are looking at JPY being really weak. So it's best to combine all these currencies right here that are stronger than the JPY and uh, look for buying opportunities. So you've got a range of them right here against the JPY that seems to be really strong. Uh, one of them that caught my eye that gives me a very good signal um, to actually not buy it straight away, but actually conduct more analysis and to figure out where is best to start buying it uh, is for NZD JPY. So NZD JPY, then you've also got your CAD JPY, you've got your Euro JPY, and also AUD JPY seem to be um, a little bit more on the high side uh, in terms of participation by traders. Okay, so this is uh, one of the ways that I um, use the heat map to figure out which are the pairs that I should be focusing on to pick before I conduct my technical analysis on them and before I decide whether to enter the market or not. Okay, so then um, on the on the actionforex.com, we've got the top 10 as well. Now, it's funny whereby when we look into the, the heat map itself uh, and then we look at the top 10, Top three itself um, has got NZD JPY, GBP JPY, and NZD CHF. So these three are also pairs that I would pick uh, to analyze further because they would give me a, a lot of buying opportunity, especially for the ones that are against the JPY because JPY is really weak. So NZD JPY, GBP JPY are on the buy side, um, and then NZD CHF as well is on the buy. Now I pick these three as well as opposed to all the other ones, mainly because we see that, uh, second, 
Okay. All right. Hi there, Alfred. I hope you can hear me loud and clear and see my screen as well. Um, so I've started already. I've just um, you know gone through uh, the first few things uh, that uh, that we need to uh, pick the right pairs. So I'm just sharing on uh, what I've noticed as well uh, on the heat map right here. I'll just go back to it a little bit. I've noticed that we have got all these pairs right here uh, against the JPY that seem to be um, giving lots of buying opportunity. Okay, so we've got one that uh, caught my eye with a an arrow going up as well, which is NZD. So that, that's one of the pairs. Give me a second. Let me just... Okay, I'm just muting you, Alfred, because I can hear the background. Okay, so there you go. So this is uh, basically it. I want to pay a lot of attention to NZJPY as well, because uh, the um, it seems to be paired with a very strong currency against a very weak one. So NZD being a very strong one uh, compared to JPY, um, very, very bearish. So, okay, let's see, we've got a question there. Okay. All right. Good. So um, yeah, I've um, I've explained this uh, at the very beginning already. So here now, um, when we look into the top movers and on action forex itself, um, we see that uh, we have got all these dots here, and they are on four hour right right up to the monthly chart, and these are for NZD JPY, GBP JPY, and NZD CHF. So these three pairs are also worth to look at further, to analyze it further onto the chart. So we want to go there as well. Um, but before that, let's just quickly go onto the currency heat map as well in Action Forex. And you can see that it confirms as well, even on the Action Forex, that all these pairs, all these currencies here are very, very weak against the NZD here. So you've got all this dark red onto one column under NZD, meaning every every uh, currencies here are trading in a very, very bad, bearish manner compared to NZD. So in other words, NZD is really, really strong. So then we have got on USD related pairs, NZD, USD is good to combine um, because you see USD very, very weak against the NZD. On Euro, you can combine your Euro versus JPY as well. You can combine Euro versus CHF. When I say you can combine, it's just to combine and then to do further analysis on the technical side on your chart, not to go and buy straight away right now because we need to conduct a technical analysis. Now we're conducting just a trend type analysis market overview in a way before we enter the charts. Uh, the charts uh, would then give you the ability to do a technical analysis to then help you make a decision of where about could you actually enter, exit, stop losses and various other things. So you can combine your euro versus the JPY because it's all straight dark blue right here, which basically means euro is very strong against the JPY, euro is very strong against the CHF, and euro is very strong against the NZD. So you've got three pairs here in this section itself. You can combine euro JPY, euro CHF, and euro NZD. And then you've got JPY, as you can see, it's got loads of columns right here that are really, really bearish, and they are all bearish on across all the time frames right here. So you can combine your JPY with Euro, JPY with GP, GBP, not to combine JPY with CHF at the moment, mainly because of this color, too many color, colors right here. So it's not really a clear trend on all time frames, but you can combine that with JPY, uh, JPY against CAD, AUD, and NZD as well. So then with GBP, you can combine that with JPY, GBP, JPY, and CHF. Uh, the rest are not really that clear. So CHF, you can combine that with uh, most of them, except for the JPY and the EUD, okay? And so on and so forth. But then when you go into NZD, you can see that it's uh, overall, it's really bullish against most pairs, except for uh, GBP and AUD. It's still bullish against the GBP and the AUD, but it's just that you want to uh, combine them with um, time frames that are majority are actually really strong. So here it's it's just bullish against GBP uh, on the weekly, uh, but actually bearish on the monthly. But I prefer to, to look into pairs deeply on the technical side when you see all the columns here, either dark blue or dark gray. Okay, so that is it. That takes us on the market analysis, trend analysis side of it, just to help us pick the right pair to look into further in within the um, technical charts.
So then we go on to the technical chart. Okay, so you guys can, I guess, uh, see clearly my screen. Um, so before we go on to there as well, I want to actually share with you on the um, option expiries. Now we have got some op options that are going to expire today. Uh, out of uh, many pairs, we've got four major pairs that will actually expire as well, and that these are Euro USD, GBP USD, and also uh, NZD USD and USDCHF. So um, here, for example, uh, if you uh, looking at looking at um, all the pairs here, even though they are the major ones, uh, we can see that NZD you want to. Uh, Play uh, pay uh, more attention on NZD because a lot of a lot of traders are focusing on NZDs uh, today on NZD bonding as well. So you can see it gives you a bit of a price uh, what you call that uh, guidance right here. So we want to also use it. Or what it means is that um, with the option expiry, let's say for NZD USD, you first want to match either one of these price with the current price. So if we go to NZD USD right here. For example, the current price is seven second, seven eight, seven three eight five, I think. What was it? Seven three eight five. There you go. So you've got seven three eight five, uh seventy three eighty five. So if we go back to the option right here, um seven three eight five is you know right up right above all these prices here. So seven three eight five is above, right? So what it means is that. NZD is still on its way up, but then somehow um, it might want to return, come back to either one of these price. So that means it might actually reverse at some point when it's got a correction. And when it starts to reverse, NZD USD might want to actually first uh, hit 6750. So what that actually means is that the NZD, no matter how nice and you know good it is actually trading at this moment of time, it might want to actually um, come back uh, to this level right here. So the correction, the corrective move can actually be as big as this 6750 to come down to 6750. And um, I'll just draw that price right here. Six seven five zero. Okay, so there we go. See, it's really far, far away, right? So from there, um, from there, right down there, that's about five six hundred plus plus pips down. So that is just to keep us away that that is a price of support for the long term that could potentially uh, happen as well. Uh, but not right now. So that would actually be, you know, some time ahead, uh, mainly because it is still on a very, very strong um, uptrend on NZD USD. So let's go back to um, the other trades that we have actually done. Um, just, uh, I think a couple of days ago, yesterday, I've also mentioned a little bit about uh, some pairs like NZD CHF, USD CHF, Euro GDP as well. So this one here, let's say it is NZD CHF. So we want to always go back to the trend, the strength of the trend. No matter whatever strategy you're using, EAs you're using or anything like that, it's good for you to have an individual approach on understanding the trend firstly. So um, it's just back to basics again. If I, we start off with one hour chart, we uh, always want to have the 50, the 100, and the 200 EMAs on there. I've also put in the um, 8 EMA in there as an extra as well, but this is just to indicate your trend. So at this stage, if we start with um, with the one hour chart, you can actually see that the NZD CHF is trading um, very strongly on an uptrend on the one hour chart. You see all the candles right there, very far away. Um, above all three lines, uh, EMA lines, and also it is above the eight EMA. So if it is uh, above the EMA as well, that actually means it's really, really very strong. Um, the reason is that the eight EMA moves very close compared to the other e uh, EMAs, even the six EMA or the 21 or anything uh, you want to use with the Fibonacci numbers as well. They are not as sensitive and as close as the current price than the eight EMA. So I've done a lot of experiment with regards to the eight EMA seems to be uh, quite good. Uh, so I, I use it to reflect, reflect the uh, trend as well. So 
let's imagine that you don't have all these candles and then you only have the eight EMA. So that eight EMA could take the place of the candles. Uh, so then it gives you an idea how um, strong the market is at the moment for NZDCHF. Because you see the current candles are also slightly above the eight EMA as well, which actually means that you know, you've got a lot of room for upward movement for NZDCHF. So then um, we have um, I've highlighted some some good potential to actually trade the the um, the NZDCHF. So already hit the PP right here, the both the yellow line. So uh, we still, I think we can actually look into more trading opportunities for NZDCHF. So let's let's look at NZDCHF right now and let's look at whether or not you have got some um, opportunities. But before that, we want to always mirror with the trend. Um, the trend before you reach the MT4 itself, the trend is telling us on the heat map, uh, telling you on both the Forex early warning heat map as well as action Forex heat map. And fundamentally, as well as telling you that it's a really bullish with all the news that's going on, very positive and various other things. Now, um, the Bank of New Zealand wants to uh, reduce rates. Uh, it wants to reduce a rate, but it has not given an indication of when exactly. So that does actually tell me that there is a potential for it to reverse to actually come down, but the question is when for NZD. But at this moment of time, when we want to trade um, on the buy, we need to ask our, uh, the questions of whether or not NZD CHF is clearly bullish on three time frames, especially on one hour, four hour, and also daily. Now, on the four hour chart, it's the same thing. It's really bullish. It's looking really great in terms of the way the EMA moves as well. It's pointing to the sky. So and you've got all these majority of candles above all the three lines as well. So that is giving us a very good indication uh, that um, we might be looking at more and more bullishness. And then we confirm again and look at the daily chart. Now, the daily chart is not too bad as well. It's giving you that same indication of a um, bullish trend for NZDCHF. But what we want to do now is uh, we know that it's bullish. We know that we might be taking the bullish run and we might want to buy. But we always need to, before we do that, that, that um, last decision of clicking the buy button, for example, or deciding on a buy, we need to ask ourselves on the risk. The risk of it reversing, can it actually reverse right now? Um, for me, uh, yes, it could actually reverse right now as well, mainly because number one, we look at the candle right there, it's already got a wick showing you upwards that the wick is getting, it is quite long on the upside, meaning that it's exhausting the uh, movement for the bulls. So the bulls are exhausted a little bit, so it's giving you that. And then we see that it's got a candle right here that's reversing potentially a bearish type candle um, forming. Then when we go into the one hour chart, you can see that the reversals already happened. You go onto the 30 minutes chart, you could see that a reversal has happened as well. So short term, it's already starting to reverse. We go into the long uh, term daily chart, and we can see that that single mother candle right there, the latest one, has got a wick to the upside as well, which also shows an indication that the bulls might be exhausted even on the long term. So that is showing us that we don't get too excited in the buying, even though we hear a lot of buying uh, taking place at the moment. But time wise, yes, it's really it's strong uh, on the NZD. But we need to talk about timing, whether or not you are supposed to buy right now. Okay, so that is that matters whether or not you're consistent or not consistent in your profit actually matters. Um, it connects with your timing of entry and your timing of exit. Okay, and timing of keeping your orders float. So, or floating. So here, basically, um, let's look to the left and let's get some hints. We'll start off with the four-hour chart and we want to look at what's the risk. What's the risk of it um, reversing? Uh, we want to also maybe get the ADX. Uh, the ADX right here gives you, it's above the 25 on the daily chart. It's above all the way through, it's above, which basically tells you that the strength is still strong but it doesn't mean that it wouldn't actually correct, do a bit of correction to then go higher again. So it might want to correct first before it goes higher. Uh, so we want to get rid of 
your ADX for now, and then you can actually insert your um, oscillator, maybe the stochastic as well, just to see whether you've got divergence or not. Uh, divergence, no, this is the wrong one. Okay. Stochastics here. Right. Um, yeah, you can use this one as well. I, I just want to look at the the peaks here, whether or not we've got any divergence on the four hour chart. Let's see. Okay. So, the daily chart. Now, on the daily chart, it, it looks like we've got clearer divergence. Why? Because you see, you've got a peak here and the slope is going up towards the current price, right? But then you've got the same peak around here, but then the slope is going down to the current price. So that means, yes, we've got some divergence. It's clearest on the daily chart. So there may be a potential um, of a reversal. So here, for example, okay, let me just, Get rid of that. So this is just an indication that there may be a bit of a reversal, but we can always do a couple of uh, analysis, trend line, and looking to the left and various other things. Um, let me just look to the left of the daily chart because it's clearer on the daily chart at this moment of time. Um, because if we look into um, here, you've got it's already gone past that that resistance level, but we just need to look at whether or not we've got any further resistance. No further resistance so far. Uh, it has already gone beyond this resistance level and uh, it's quite strong. So there are chances that it might continue to go up. But then let's look at whether or not we've got some bullish, single bullish candle that is actually quite strong um, here in this area, in this uh, current price area. You've got, you've got one here, you've got another here, okay? Uh, so that's on the on the on the daily chart. So then, if we take this one here, it finishes there. So there is a potential for prices to actually go up with a bit of a support of previous mother candle to go up to six seven twenties area. Okay. So now we go back to the four hour chart and we want to look at the same. We want to look at whether or not you've got any reversal on the left because you've got limited data for NZDCHF right here. If you go to the back, you can't go back more. So you've got limited, but then when you go onto the daily chart, then you can actually see more, more data of, of the price. And then we capture the mother candle. We see that we've got some, we've got some potential uh, buy, okay, based on the, uh, daily chart. So if uh, those who want to actually buy, and we've got some room, some space until 6720 area, but I would think that 6710 to exceed would be better. Or uh, we've got the 6700 area. So uh, you want to look out for the 6700 area as well, because this is what the market is giving you. The market is giving you whether or not you can buy or you can sell depends on what you can see to the left. You can see the mother candles as well, whether there's power at the time or not. We want to mirror that. If not, then uh, we don't have any other ways to really get more information of whether or not it's a good timing to buy or, or sell. Uh, good timing always uh, depends on whether there's good power or not, whether there's participation of sellers, buyers. So that's why we want to look to the left a little bit and it looks like if prices were to come down lower to this area right here, then the sell might actually be taking place much more. So right now, it's a little bit too early to sell, a little bit, uh, maybe more people would prefer to actually buy because of the trend. The trend is really on the buy side. But if it starts to actually drop and drop further and come down to this area right here, then the sell might actually be taking place instead of a buy. So here at 6650, you see it's exactly at where the psychological level is. So 6640 onwards would actually be ideal to actually sell. And then you can uh, take profit for your sell order 
um, as long as this mother camel right here to actually take profit at six five. Uh, let's say six five. Um, yeah, six five. 60, 6560 or 6565 would probably be good. So you've got some, some room there to play on the sell side of it, uh, maybe about 70 pips or so, 60 pips or so um, from there to there, but only if it reaches that 650 and below, then you begin to sell. So now you don't sell, uh, you don't sell at all until it comes down to this area. Now it's still on buy mode. So your buying mode. Uh, should actually be quite limited to this 6, 7, 10 area. So if you want to take some risk and you want to um, apply a buy and also a pending order, you can TP at 6, 7, 10 for NZBCHF. Okay, because now it is uh, leaning towards um, potential for for correcting itself. So then uh, we want to also be a little bit uh, weary on that. So sell might actually take place, as I've mentioned, uh, but then 6640 is your sell because uh, this is what we want to monitor at this moment of time, whether or not it wants to come down lower and then look at the support area and then continue the buying trend. Uh, that we don't know yet. As, as of now, it is actually beginning to correct. Uh, whether it is a strong correction or not, we don't know that yet. We need to look at until where it actually comes down to. So if you want to change your, your strategy into a sell instead of a buy, you need to wait the selling price is at 6540, which is ideal better selling price, not right now anyway. So you can actually do a pending order for the sell side of it in, in case it wants to correct uh, quite strongly. You can actually do a pending order at 6640 and you can take profit at 6590, for example. And that would be quite nice, 60 pips or so, 50, 60 pips or so. Uh, on the pending side of it, but you need to also ask yourself whether you are willing to lose that 50, 60 pips as well, okay? So that is on the sell side, if it actually triggers the sell uh, side of it. And there's a risk, of course, involved, because at the moment, the trend is still on the upside. So for those who are already buying, um, still the, the buy is a little bit limited at the 6, 7, 10 area, because I wouldn't want to, um, put more on the buying, even though the trend is actually strong, until I see that the buyers are actually going above 6,720 and above, so 6,730 onwards, uh, then I can put a second buy again, for example. Okay, so I hope that's clear for NZDCHF. Um, Alfred, you wanted to look at some pairs on here. Here we go. Let me see, yeah. AUD, USD, Euro, USD, USDJPY, AUD, USD, GBP, and ZD. Okay, you can take a look at GBP and ZD uh, first, mainly. Yeah, GBP and ZD. Let's look at GBP and ZD. Yeah, mainly because of the. Um, NZD pair, um, TBP and ZD. Let's take a look at the heat map once more. Um, we've got NZD, GBP here, GBP and ZD. It's quite a mixed bag there. I I wouldn't actually pick this pair, uh, mainly because the, it's not that clear. So it's probably best to work on NZD, USD, NZD, JPY, Euro, NZD, all the pairs that I've actually sent. Uh, out as well. So that, that would actually be much better to look at because we don't want a mixed bag of trends. We don't want colorful ones like this FJPY, maybe it's just too risky as well. Okay, so uh, you want a clear trend and you want a clear trend across majority of the time frame. So let's pick one of it. Uh, we've already looked at NZD, NZD USD earlier on. Uh, NZD CHF is also another one. Uh, we, we've already talked about NZDCHF right there. Uh, USDCHF already hit the TP as, uh, as we discussed. Uh, so we can change this NZD. Uh, this one here, we can change it to NZDJPY. Let's look at NZDJPY. Okay, um, which one are you in the, in the trade for the buy? The trade for the buy is for GBPJPY, is it? The first two, which is uh, AUD, UD, USD, and GBP, NZD. Is that correct? Yeah. 
Okay, we can do a bit of troubleshoot for this one because it's not a pair to really pick at this moment of time, mainly because of the trend. Um, but we can do a bit of a, a bit of a troubleshoot to see, you know, what is there to do with the GBP NZD. And um, yeah, so your GBP NZD, this one here, you are on the buy. Uh, here, firsthand itself on the one hour chart, uh, uh, I just go very quickly on your GBP and set the AUD USD. Here itself, when you look at it straight away on GBP and set the, um, you need to go back to your first steps, whether or not you followed the steps of the trend analysis first uh, to pick the right pair. So um, I wouldn't actually be picking GBP and set the AUD USD mainly because uh, when I went through with you as well, on the trend analysis, I picked up eight pairs that has got very strong buying signals uh, today, mainly because uh, most of their uh, time frames are actually on a buy, a very, very strong uptrend. Uh, so for GDP and ZD, you can see straight on, you see the three lines itself is just not good. Uh, when you go into the four hour chart, for example, uh, it's the same, it's all sideways as well. Then you go on the daily chart, you can see it's all sideways. So it's not uh, as well highlighted on the action forex heat map or the forex early warning heat map. Uh, and it's not on any fundamentals as well. GBP against the NZD is just not clear. So it wouldn't be uh, a pair that I would have picked at the first instance. Uh, but then um, visually as well, you see this long wick right here. It's just telling you that it's not going to go up. So um, it's not going to go up. It's actually going to go down. At this moment of time so this is basically um giving you that hint straight away okay for gbp and ZD. so i will also go on to aud uh, usd now uh, with aud usd if you go on to your one hour chart it's looking clear on the upside uh trend is correcting at this moment of time um on the four hour chart it looks uh, much better, much, much uh, stronger AUD USD on the buy side uh, for the four hour chart. What that means is that not now, a little bit later, it might actually pick up. So maybe for now, it might want to correct first. So you are experiencing a little bit of correction first uh, for the AUD USD. So the, uh, to answer the question of whether or not you should leave it open, uh, maybe for AUD USD, you can leave it open, but not for the GBP and ZD because the GBP and ZD is much more, uh, at risk if you want to leave it open for now because of the trend situation. AUD USD, if you can afford to keep it a little bit longer, then you can keep it. If not, you want to cut your loss early as well you can do that so it's entirely up to yourself which uh, of the two options you would like to do okay so that's for gbp and zd and AUD usd so now let's talk a little bit about um nzd jpy uh being my second one on the list because we've got eight uh pairs that is worth looking at so we've got nzd usd we've got nzd jpy we've got euro nzd euro chf uh, GBP, JPY, GBP, CHF, CAD, CHF, and NZD, CHF. So majority are actually against the uh, two safe heavens, against the CHF and against the JPY. So safe heavens are not um, are not in focus at the moment. So majority of traders are on a risk on mode. So what that means is that they are willing to take the risk in the market. Majority of traders, investors are actually greedier and much more having more risk appetite so they are buying buying all the other currency uh, uh currencies that are risky currency pairs that are risky so because they are actually risky they are uh, not putting a buy uh, on gold on chf and jpy so that actually means that they are all weaker now all the safe heavens are weaker chf jpy and gold are weaker so that that is giving us a hint that people are mostly willing to take the risk, okay? So then we have the eight pairs that I've mentioned earlier on. They're all on a buy type opportunity. I'm not saying go and buy right now. We need to go onto it one by one to actually see where do we actually buy, start buying, where are the risks and various other things. So let's start off with NZD USD, we've already seen, so we can go on to NZD JPY. So let's just um, go here. 
NZDJPY, NZDUSD, we've looked at it already. I just want to put it here. Uh, let's try. Okay. So we've got NZD all the way. Uh, that's NZDJPY. That's here. Um, I want to always uh, put my settings on. That's with the three EMAs, uh, for those who are new to it, I, I use the 50, the 100, and the 200 exponential moving average, like this one here. And basically, um, they're only used for trend analysis, only to look at the trend, not to enter the trade, not to exit the trade. I don't use any indicators to signal entries or exits at all. So here I've got the EMA as well. So now if we look at the one hour chart for the NZDJPY, let's look at it on a zoom out manner. You can see that the, all the steps are going upwards. So it's giving you a nice run to the upside. There's a bit of correction happening at the moment. But in terms of trend, look at the three lines, the three EMAs are giving you a very good hint of an uptrend bullish movement. And then you compare that to the four hour chart and similarly, you look at the way it moves as well. It's just giving you a lot of hints to the upside and it's still bullish. And then we move on to the daily chart. Daily chart is still signaling the same. And then when you look at the daily chart itself, you look at the single mother candle. It is giving you a very good hint that we have definitely got a lot of strength of the New Zealand dollar against the CHF. There's a lot of participation of bulls, participation of, of buyers in the market. So that's on the daily chart. Now we go back to the four hour chart and then we zoom out a little bit. Okay, and I want to now take a look at the risk factor. Always look at the risk factor. What could stop that excitement? What could stop that excitement is what you need to always pay attention to. Okay, um, let's see. Oops. So um, if I zoom out and I cannot see further back, I go on to the next um daily chart or you know a chart that is uh, that's giving me more data to look to the back so here for example monthly and daily uh is it's, it's quite good to look at further uh, movement to the back now as i see that if i look at it at, at an angle um uh, on a zoom out angle i can see that if prices were to go up a little bit more it might reach this peak or even this peak, this peak, this peak, and this peak. So all these peaks are resistance zones, resistance level for you. Of course, it's on a daily chart. You, you couldn't see that on a on a four hour chart or less time frame. So it is actually good to just be aware that you have this level here to watch out for. So I'm drawing two lines to indicate my resistance here. This is the the soonest or the um, the closest. Uh, resistance level that we need to be aware of at 78.64. Now, uh, we are only at 78.04.05. So uh, 78.04.05 is quite, uh, it's about 40 plus plus pips away from the psychological number of 78.50. Uh, so I want to always lay out the 76, 78.50 uh, line as well, which is psychological level, to tell you that if you are thinking of buying as well, you can buy, but then you want to look at the risk. The risk of it reversing could most probably be at the 78.50 area, okay? So you want to always be alerted of where that 78.50 is, where the bomb could poss possibly explode so that you don't get overly excited with the buy. Um, oh, that's 77, sorry, uh, maybe that's 78.50. Seven, seven, eight, right. seven, eight, point fifty. Okay, there you go. So now, if we go there, right now, if I were to zoom in a little bit, then I know that okay, I have got some buying opportunity. Now I look at the price. Now is at seven eight. Uh, seven. You can actually start buying at seven eight ten because seven eight ten would be 10 pips above 78.00, and then you want to take profit at 78.40. Okay, so 40 minus 10, that's 10, that's 30 pips. So you've got a bit of a, 
you've got 30 pips, uh, 30 pips type potential. Uh, if you are following the trend for the NZD JPY, it is definitely on an uptrend. Uh, so what I would then do is uh, I could do a bit of a pending order right here. Okay, we've got uh, it's a buy. Uh, buy stock, for example, because the market is going up, there's no reversal so far, it's looking quite good. So I could easily do a buy stock right there, and then my take profit is 7840. Okay, so that's 78, and then I put it there at 40, 40 right there. Buy stock, uh, take profit, I oh, know that's the price, sorry, 7810 would be the price. 7840 would be uh, let's see it's 7840. Okay, that's your take profit. Uh, you can do your stop loss later on or, or now, it's entirely up to yourself. But usually, my guideline for stop loss is one to one ratio. So, if it's 30 pips, I put that as 30 pips as well. Uh, so, your, your 78, uh, you know, going down 78, 70 or something like that would be your, your uh, stop loss area. So, I'll just start that. One lot there, take profit 7840, 77. Uh, this a price right there. So, buy stock, adjust that to 78, 7810. So, then we place there and Okay, so that's uh, done on a small type expectation for NZDJPY on a buy stock one lot uh, at the moment, taking profit at 78.40. So not at 78.50, um, but 78.40, okay? Uh, anywhere that is uh, basically a little bit lower, uh, five or 10 pips under that. So because here we have got that price already laid out, with the resistance level right there. Okay, so hope that is clear. Um, so that is a little bit of a signal to buy for NZDJPY. Okay, so we can move on to Euro NZD as well. Let's look at what's happening. I like moving on to Euro pairs as well because I think we've got something on the uh, economic calendar. We've got some announcements and things like that even tomorrow and day after tomorrow. So I would imagine that there's a lot of uh, Volatility right there is what we expect. So that's NZDJPY done. Let's look for another pair. The third pair uh, right there is your Euro NZD. So there we go. And similarly, similarly, I would like to upload the template right there with the EMAs as usual and then we go to the right. Um, it's best to zoom out a little bit just to get a bit of an idea of the overall trend movement. If you zoom in a little bit too much you might miss miss out on the movement. So here it gives us a you know a very clear indication versus the NZD euro is really weak. So um, it is uh, you know um, it's nicely weak as well because we've got all these uh, candles right there under all the three lines of the one hour chart. Uh, we want to um, compare that with the four hour chart. It's looking the same as well. If we see more bearish candle right there, we go into the daily chart. Uh, we look into the three EMAs. Uh, it's even stronger, the bearish candle right there. So um, it looks like we've got a lot of momentum, but let's just also check with uh, the ADX right there. So with the ADX, oh, this is a different one. Give me a second. Hmm, it's a little bit different on this one here. Um, ADX, let's just see the level that it's on. It's got no, um, it's not really, this is the accelerator, so it's not the ADX. Okay. Mm, it's a bit different. I don't know why, but it uploads the accelerator one. So it's not exactly. I was just using it just about 
an hour ago uh, was different. Never mind. Uh, we can see that it's looking not too bad on that. It's trading at 66.64. So on its way down, it might go. Um, there is a potential for it finding support. So we want to look at the risk level always. So uh, yes, it's all on a downtrend, really looking great. Uh, but then uh, 66, 50, 64, uh, 50 is your psychological level. So you want to lay that one out uh, there. Because my question is, where can it actually reverse? Always, where can it actually reverse? Okay, so 64, 50, second. Okay, it's quite close to 64.50 right there. I've got a question right there. Give me a second. Um, okay, great, Alfred. Uh, let's monitor and see what happens with your um, NZDJPY. So NZDJPY, let's go back. Yeah, I triggered there. Uh, it's looking not too bad. So uh, let's leave it and see what happens. Uh, you've, uh, I hope you set your stop loss as well and uh, and so that you know how much you're willing to lose as well with, with this. If it is a, uh, you know, if it hits the uh, take profit, that's a bonus, uh, but you want to monitor your losses first. You want to know whether or not it's the willingness of how much loss are you willing to lose if it doesn't actually hit your TP. So that's the most important thing. Uh, it's so far looking good, but we cannot guarantee anything. So uh, yeah, it's good that it triggered. Okay, so Euro NZD is your next one right now. And um, I want to just zoom out a little bit. And uh, when I zoom out on the daily chart, I can see that, uh, you know, 64.50, where the psychological level is, it's also having loads of um, support area as well. So I want to be uh, really careful with this. I want to know, uh, you know, th this is probably, you've got a bomb that can explode here, explode here, explode here. If you're on a cell, then you've got support, support, support here to look out for. Uh, there are higher support, better level of buying uh, above here, of course, which could price right up there. But I want to look for selling opportunities because uh, do I see any selling um, strong sell under the line, under this red line. This is what I want to look at. So I can see that there's a little bit of power with the, with the bearish candle right there, but that would take price down to this level here, uh, which is 6342. Uh, now, if, if price does go down under 6450, it might actually come down to 6340 area. But if it does go under 6340, it might go even lower, which basically means it might then follow this candle right here, this bearish candle, and go lower to this level right there. Okay. So I wouldn't actually be looking at any more selling until it goes under the 64, uh, 6450 area. So my my sell could be at 64.40, okay? So 64.40, and then I take a profit at 63.60 area. So because we've got a bit of a window right here, from here to here, that's about nine, about 100 pips right there. But all the way down here, it's about 200 plus pips. So yes, you've got that, but we need to take it in stages. We need to follow the mother candle as well, whether or not it's any power at the time. Uh, at this moment of time, it's too close for loads of um, uh, buying areas as well. And we've also, it's too close to the 6450 psychological number. So uh, here as well, Euro is that the, for the sell, you can do a pending order. You can do a pending order at 6440, and then uh, you can take profit at 6360. Okay, so it'll be less than 100 pips, but then you've got there to, to measure because we are working on this uh, mother candle right here. There has been a pressure there. So we, we expect that the traders would want to mirror that movement uh, right there following the power of a single mother candle right there. Because that uh, the single mother candle actually talks about price participation of traders uh, following the strength of the body of the candle. So uh, right now, it's a little bit risky. I just want to make sure that the price goes into the sell zone. The sell zone is under 64.50 uh, because now anytime it might 
decide to just reverse a little bit up, for example. And the reversal is not a problem, but the participation of that reversal is a problem. If, for example, it reversed and then not many traders come in to buy, then it's okay. But what if something happens out there that we cannot control and then I uh, got the news, something had just happened and then suddenly we got strength of the euro and then more participation, then that reversal will become the change of trend as well. So that is why we want to be very careful with the price and we'll take it in stages. Uh, so I wouldn't be just clicking the sell button now and aim at 200 pips right down here because it is very, very risky. Number one, it is too close to the psychological level uh, because the question to ask is where can it reverse? Not where can you put your TP. Where can you put your TP is actually uh, important, but not as important as where can it actually reverse because um, the reversal can take down your your uh, profit levels anyway because if your reversal becomes a change of trend then it's a problem okay all right there you go so that is the uh, two pairs right there um i would need to uh to uh stop the session and then continue with the rest of the eight pairs because i'm doing more analysis on those ones but as of now it probably be good to actually do the analysis uh, yourselves as well if you guys have got any questions you can actually uh, just uh, send me a message you can actually use the facebook there we are thinking of a chat type box so that any traders uh, wants to ask question at that moment of time can actually ask us straight away so so that you are communicated to all the traders that are actually trading at the moment and they can actually help you out as well okay but in the meantime you can always go on to uh, the facebook uh, page uh, and then you can actually do that there uh, on on breton academy uh, facebook page okay all right, guys, that's it I have for you guys. And uh, any questions at all? Uh, Alfred, any questions? You guys have got questions, just ask. Okay, good. Uh, anytime you, guys, you have questions as well, Alfred, can ask me as you know that. So uh, the rest of you guys as well on Facebook or even on our GTI group, uh, as well uh, feel free okay guys now all the very best uh, for the next uh, one or two days more for trading and uh, we'll see you guys again take care thank you guys bye-bye